Okay, I'm back. <laughs> it's Ruth Ann from Art of the City TV. And again, I'm excited to invite John Douglas onto the show. So you'll have to bear with us because sometimes technology isn't everything we'd hope it to be. But um, John is an incredible artist and musician and I can't say enough about him. And it looks like we can get him on. I think so. And it looks like it's connecting and hello. We hey. have the eagle has landed. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Let me turn you up here. Okay, there you good. Are. Good. Good to see Sorry you. So I was just, I just gave this whole big opening about how incredible it is to have someone who is equally as talented in music as you are in art. And it's kind of an anomaly. I mean, it's one of those things that you don't really see very often. So why don't you share with uh, all the viewers and you know, you're very famous. How did this all start with the music? And then how did it uh, kind of segue into fine art or were they both, um, you know, kind of something that were your passions for a long time? Well, uh, I think based on what my parents told me that uh, drumming came first. I think, you know, beating on pots and pans uh, and um, Quaker oatmeal boxes and whatever I could get my hands on probably before I could even hold a pencil or a crayon. So I think that's, I think that came first and it's way more, way more primal, you know, so uh, you don't have to be good to enjoy it. It's, you know, it's a, it's a very visceral thing, hitting drums and stuff. So I think that came first and it's therefore I think it's kind of deeper embedded in me. Uh, and then, uh, but the art and music have gone hand in hand as, as long as I can remember. So uh, back up a little bit. So when you were a kid, how did you get into the drums? Like were, how old were you when you were like, okay, I'm really feeling this passion. Uh, well, I, like I said, it was before I can remember. So I can I know that uh, in elementary school, as soon as you could start band, fifth or sixth grade or whatever, uh, I I took it in in band. I took it in in school. So I knew I knew well before that 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 that's what I wanted to do. I was just drawn to uh, drums, music, and in particular, uh, drums. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then were you also drawn to art when you were a kid? Were you doing art? I mean, all kids do art, but was it kind of something you were into? Yeah, I, I again, my, uh, my mom would tell me that I would rather be inside drawing than outside most of the time, you know. Uh, so yeah, and again, as far back as I can remember, was uh, just drawing, in particular, it's always been portraits. I like to people. At that point, yeah. it wasn't painting. It was it was pencil to paper. Okay. You know, I would just uh, sit in my room and draw for hours. Yeah. So this is, you know, because when you have somebody like yourself that has all of these incredible music accolades, you know, I mean, I, I read, well, I know you're humble, but I read your resume and I was like, wow, you've done a lot. So you know, to take that and now you're doing the art. Um, how do you feel about, I guess, when you're playing music, that passion that you have and you're in the moment, how do you think that passion transfers when now you're in front of a canvas? Ooh. I, I, I hope, first of all, I hope it transfers. I mean, because at the base of it all, uh, I'm a fan, you know, um, and, be, you know, again, because music runs so deep in me, I paint a lot of musicians, uh, bands, uh, you know, some, it crosses over a little bit into more pop culture because I'm a fan of pop culture as well, you know, yeah. but again, it's, it, it, it boils down to that I really, really, really like to paint people portraits okay. and so then so then it's for me it's just a natural to want to paint uh 
my favorite bands or uh, in in and I and I do prefer to paint them in in what I would call their natural habitat, which is like on stage performing. Right, and you um, capture that in such an incredible way. It's the when I was looking at your artwork, it's the really the subtle expressions that you can see that the you know these incredible musicians that are really making a mark on history. Um, it's those very subtle nuances that you capture in your work that I think transcends where you feel like you're watching them, like you're on a stage. And I think well, that's you. incredible. That's, that's, that's what I shoot for. So, I mean, thank you. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your music. Um, what do you think have been, you know, some of your highlights? I know that, you know, you're a drummer for Aerosmith and you were, wasn't there recently a big CARES, um, um, like a CARES music festival that just made it underneath the, the radar of this coronavirus thing? Uh, yeah, the music CARES. I mean, uh, just to clarify, I'm not the drummer for Aerosmith. You do drum, yeah, though, I, for I, Filled in, I had the honor uh, to fill in uh, last year and spilling over into this year uh, when Joey, who is the drummer for Earl Smith, okay. got injured. And so I got, I got like pulled from the bench, if you will, and, nice. and thrown in. And, uh, you know, you, you get, that's like you get thrown in the deep end uh, <laughs> with a life preserver. Uh, but, you know, that's rock and roll too, you know, so um, that's certainly. Uh, I ended up playing uh, about 35 shows with them over the wow. course of 2019 and spilling over into that led up to Music Cares and then the Grammys. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was a complete... What was that uh, like to play at the Grammys? I know. I know. It's, I mean, with, <laughs> with these iconic, this iconic band, I mean, at such an event, um, I tried not to think too much about it, you know, because that can be your enemy. I mean, and it's over so quickly. I mean, I think we, I think this, the spot we played was like a little over five minutes, you know, so it's, it's live TV, obviously going out to millions and millions of people. So of which, again, I try not to think about before. <laughs> yes. uh, so, and fortunately at that point, you know, I had played many shows with them. So I was much more comfortable uh, with them and, and, and at the drums and, right. and, you know, so before, before you know it, it's that five minutes is, is up, you know, and, uh, what a thrill though. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. How, I, mean, what, I mean, what can you say? I mean, it's, that's how are you going to, you can't stop that. I can't. <laughs> yeah. That was going to yeah. be my ne next question is, is, you know, as far as you've come in your musical career, uh, what is the highlight? And I mean, that happened. When when was that um, played? The Grammys, Music Cares and Grammys were at, right at the end of January. Okay, so that yeah. was that's probably going to be the highlight thus far because everything yeah. shut down after that. Yeah, everything after that in 2020. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's talk about that. So um, do you have kids? I do. What are the What are the ages? I have uh, I have a daughter who's 28. Okay. And then, and then uh, uh, two boys, one's 18 and one's 13, who are here. Okay. Yeah. And, and the 18-year-old and 13-year-old, have they been sequestered at home then? Yeah. During this with you? Yes. How's that been? Which, you know, uh, thank God for the internet, man, because <laughs> <laughs> they're in their rooms playing video games with their friends. And, and you know, so it's... it's uh, it wasn't because of that for them that life wasn't uh, all that difficult. Now, you know, when, when some of the friends, parents were as strict as strict as us, as far as them getting together and we'd have, and right. I, you know, hey, right. so that was a bit of a struggle at times, but eventually they, they got it. And, uh, but, you know, for me, when I'm not on the road, I'm a homebody mm -hmm. anyway. Um, so, and I got, you know, my studio here, which I'm perfectly content. Well, and that works out really well. And it probably gave you an opportunity, I would imagine, to delve into your art. 
Yeah. You know, having that time because everything's shut down. No gigs are happening. My yeah. gallery has been shut down. I have a 13 year old. So, you know, that's been a challenge. So, yeah. How's that for you? Uh, it's, you know, we got to know each other a lot better. <laughs> for better yes. or for worse. For worse, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I yeah. mean, I think, I think overall it's been good, but it definitely, you know, it's a trip. I mean, who would have thought in our lifetime we would experience a time when the entire planet shuts down at the exact same time for the exact same reason? Yeah. I mean, even just wrap your mind around that. I know. It's uh, it, like the uh, the day the earth stood still, uh, which is one of my favorite things to do. But yeah, uh, yeah, I know. And for music business in particular, we, we shut down first because it's, you know, large groups. Right. It, it kind of started with, you know, with sports and, and entertainment and then whittled its way down until, you know, everything was shut down. Right. And unfortunately, it's probably going to open up that way, meaning I don't know when. We don't yeah. know when. A, 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 you know, a big concert is going to take place and that, right. it, that's depressing. I try not to think about it. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I do and I want to start talking about your art and looking at some of it is that I think it gave most people on the planet a greater appreciation for the arts, meaning for music, for art that was around us, for creativity, because when you're sequestered, you're stuck in your home, those are the things that really are the solace, you know, turning yes. on some, you know, really cool rock or, you know, seeing the beauty, the things you've collected, they bring you a certain feeling of, um, I guess I'd say not just inspiration, but also permanency. These are the things that we have created as a society and then we're able to still partake of that in our home and man, it's powerful. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and it's ironic in, a, in not a good way that uh, as our appreciation for, for art or the arts, I should say, whether it's music, right. theater or uh, movies or uh, you know, all, everything in between, we can't get out and enjoy <laughs> it together. Because you know, right. many of those things, uh, or designed to be, you know, done in in concert in with a bunch of right like-minded people that are there to see, you know, that band or you know this play or you know a, 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 this a movie. Even though even though you know streaming online and, and you know Netflix is, is is awesome, but there's something about for me, you know, going to the theater. Yes. At the opening of a great, you know, in the big screen and the popcorn and, you know, and you're there with a bunch of people that are, that want to be there as well. Yes. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. And so it's the same with, with music and, and uh, as I, I think to a certain degree, art in, in two dimensional. It's the energy. And yeah. It's the energy that we feed off of each other. Plus, you don't have an excuse to have that fourth cocktail when you're by yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there's that, right? Yeah. So let's, I, I'm peeking behind, he, behind you there. Um, what, let's look at that incredible painting you have there. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I paint, I paint unstretched. Okay. It, it, because I paint so much on the road in hotel rooms. So, so just by that, you know, I, I, the canvas is rolled up, rolled up. So even when I'm home, that's just how I got used to it. And, and, and now I'm, uh, I painted on a canvas. Actually, when I first got home from in in, uh, in February, and because we had a break schedule, Aerosmith had a a break schedule of a couple couple months before the lockdown, okay. and before it got canceled, we had a break. So I came home and I had a a, a large uh, pre stretched canvas here that I thought, oh, you know, I'm home. I'll I'll paint on a, and boy, it it messed with me. It was just I'm so used to it being the canvas against the wall. That That's so interesting. All that movement, because it was a big, it was a 48 by 60 large canvas. So there was a lot of movement right. that I'm just not used to. So let me see if I can do this without. Okay. You know. So that's a. Oh, a wow. That's pretty a large. Uh, obviously, the Beatles, which is, again, unusual for me because I, I prefer to paint 
you know, with guitars and, and but this was a commission piece. But so this is just incredible. I then, really love that. There's a, a are drummer. You, are you using, oh, we know who that is. Yeah. It's an art show for that guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, are you using, um, when you're painting, are you using like a watercolor wash because, or is it a, you using charcoal? What are you using when you're creating that? Uh, that's all acrylic. Um, and yes, I, I, I kind of started doing the, you know, I'm, again, I travel so light or try to travel light when I'm, when I'm, I paint more on tour than I do typically. Okay. Uh, then I do when I'm, when I'm home. Because uh, when I'm home, I'm either, I, you know, I've been gone, so I, sp I try to spend more time with my family. Sure. And, and then other times I have, I, I paint a lot of drums and guitars for a lot of bands. Okay. Uh, so that's a, a large object that I can't paint in hotel rooms, typically, although I have. But so share with us, what does that look like? So here you are, you go, you know, you, you play maybe, you know, the, the night before, and then you yeah. get up, and then... What is your, um, I guess your routine seems like a whole lot when you're on the road and you know, you, you're rolling out your camera. Take us through what that looks like. Well, you know, the first, the first thing about touring is, is it's, um, it's, you know, the, the two hours or whatever the, of the show, the two hours that you're, if you're playing, the two hours that you're on stage, that's the easy part. It's okay. the other 22 hours of the day that, you know, uh, that's when people get into trouble. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's your downtime. That's, you know, and then days off. And, and so I, I, when I first started uh, touring behind the scenes, uh, meaning uh, I'm a drum tech. That's how, that's how I, I was the Aerosmith drum tech when Joey got hurt and they put me in the, in the show, you know. So when you're part of the crew, it's all about routine. It's like you do the same thing at every show. The, you know, everything, it's all, that's what it's designed, you know, so when the band walks into a different building in a different country, it feels exactly like it did yesterday. So, in other words, it's not creative at all. So it's you like know. Groundhog Day. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, for me, I'm like, okay, I got to do something creative if I'm going to attempt to keep my sanity and, and do this. Okay. So, so, I started painting, and, uh, uh, on the road, I was already painting, but, and, and, and so I refined it down to, um, I carry canvas wrapped around a PVC pipe so that it can't ever get damaged. And, and it's just long enough to fit in overhead compartments on airplanes. Wow. Most, most of the time. And I carry, uh, I'll show you. I carry, and I paint really thin. I still use airbrush paint, but I paint, with a paintbrush. Okay, so, now I get it because I the carry, detail that you're getting, I and mean, you're telling me acrylic, I'm like, wow, that's really yeah. tricky. I carry black paint and white paint okay. in, in double Ziploc bags because it's in my luggage and I don't want paint all over my junk when I open that. Okay. And I mix the paint on a drum head. So that's, uh, I carry that and then I carry some paintbrushes. So it's Love really it. pretty light. That's just in my suitcase. And, um, and then the two for my canvas. So I, and then when I check into a new hotel, you know, I'm like, I cross my fingers that I got a wall big enough. Cause I do like to paint big. I, most of my paintings are about 36 by 48. That uh, is large. But the canvas spills over, you know, because that's the image size. So, you know, it's, it's about 40 by, 55 or something is the size of the canvas that I take. So I got to find a flat space on a hotel wall. You so, know, so that's, that's you the first can word. You then tack it up? With, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Either duct tape or uh, uh, push pins. Okay. And, uh, and then you don't let housekeeping in because <laughs> I they may not that. approve of that. They're uh, like, wait, that rock and roll star is back. Remember? Yeah. No, just kidding. They've had worse than the guy painting. Sure. In the room. <laughs> so, and then, so when I got, when I start to do the, like the drips and stuff, cause I'm just looking for, especially in backgrounds and stuff. I'm, you know, so many of the uh, backgrounds of a, of a performance shot of a live shot is black. 
right. just by nature of spotlights hitting in the back is, is, is just black. So, and sometimes that's great, but other times I'm like, I want, I want something back there. So I started playing with drips where I would just thin the paint with water a whole lot, but I can't do that on a hotel wall. You can't fling it for sure. No. Problematic. So I take it into the bathroom, into the shower or the bathtub. So, and I take pictures all along. So, I, and I posted some of these where it's like there's a painting hanging in a, in a, in a bathroom, uh, and I'll drip the paint so that you know it goes in the tub, and I can clean up and yeah. try to be respectful of the hotel. That, you know what? That is such a passion for the arts. I mean, who does this? Who <laughs> is a musician and then you know brings the paint kit and then utilizes wherever your studio is is the hotel room and then you know, comes up because you're using a lot of um, different techniques, you know, with the drips and probably, you know, throwing yeah. a little bit of paint. What, I mean, that's very innovative. Well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, I definitely have my restrictions in space, in, in lighting, you know, that's the other hurdle in hotel rooms right. is lighting. Um, and also, uh, not just the wall space, but you know, can I, because it's so, I paint so big, I have to be able to get back away from it to have some perspective. Right. You know? uh, so all these, so sometimes I'm painting in a, in a, in a space, the only spaces that I have, but then I have to move the painting somewhere in the hotel room just to get to look, you know, review to get it. Perspective just to, too. Yeah. To get the perspective on, yeah. the, on the artwork. Yeah. I, I don't think, you know, a lot of the folks that are watching, um, they don't get to see the backstory of somebody that's um, such a talent like you are that, oh, you know, it's, you really have to problem solve Yeah. when you're creating art. And then when you don't have a studio that you just go to the same studio every day, like most artists, um, you have to be even more creative, which you are. So I wanted to ask you, um, I noticed that you had painted a lot of different uh, star, rock stars and musicians. Um, was there any particular one that really stood out that you got to paint or work with? Well, you know, it's always, I don't always paint people that I'm working for. Okay. Because, you know, that could be risky. <laughs> if they don't, if they don't, if they don't do a great job, they're, you know, uh, or, I, or I, maybe I don't always show them that I'm what I've done. Uh, but I've been very fortunate in, you know, that uh, I, I usually get pretty favorable responses uh, from from the guys uh, or ladies. And I, uh, what was your question? <laughs> My question is, is was there anyone that you particularly, like you did a painting of, that you just said, my gosh, I took that artwork to the next level, that you just felt so amazed at your own ability. Because I think a lot of times with artists, they're their own worst critics. Oh yeah. So I always ask artists, what did you like the best? Because most of the time, most artists are like, yeah, well, you know, I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna get better. They yeah. never arrive. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the answer to that is my favorite is gonna be the next one. <laughs> you know, uh, and, you know, there are times where, I mean, there are some, because each one is kind of my baby, you know, it's, it's, sure. do I have favorites? Sure. Yeah. And, and I try to, I, I try to, uh, first of all, I build, I build my next painting. Now I kind of do my sketches in Photoshop. So obviously I have to work from photo references because I'm painting right. real people, you know, so. I gather different images and I try never to copy one single photograph for obvious reasons. Right. Copyright, whatever. Right. Um, I want to respect the photographers. Now, some photographers I know, you know, and so I get permission. Um, but most of the time I build, you know, I'm, I'm doing like a Frankenstein where I'll take the head from one image sure. and the body pose, and I'm trying to build the perfect pose that I feel captures that musician uh because they all they all have kind of their their quirks and their you know their what i would call their their uh you know go-to pose or something that's real um indicative of their style of their look 
So I, I'll, I'll build that in Photoshop with however many photos it takes. And, and um, then I try to live with that for as long as I can, meaning I'll go back and look at it, you know, a week later, a right. month later to make sure until I try to forget what I changed. Like, does it look natural to me? Because it's risky when you're putting the, the head sure. of one, you know what I mean, proportionally and, and, and all that stuff. Now, there's gonna be differences in lights, light sources and all that stuff, and I gotta fix that when I paint it so that it looks like a cohesive piece. Well, you know, you but, know what it reminds me of? What? It reminds me of Monet, because he would go and he would, you know, he did plain air. He didn't do figurative. Well, he actually did do some figurative. But what he would do is he would go out to a spot that he was going to capture. And he would observe that area different times of the day for maybe two or three weeks. And that was his own Photoshop. Obviously, that was before <laughs> yeah. Photoshop existed, right? Yeah. But he would sketch and he would take different references from different times of the day until he got an idea of how to meld all those together. And that's exactly what you're doing is you're looking at different photo references, you're pulling it all together. And ultimately what it ends up with is nothing, it's not, it has nothing to do with anything that existed before. It has everything to do with you as an artist creating this original work that exists. So yeah, it's very I, cool that you're doing I, it like that. I mean, it was, it was, it's, it's, again, it's kind of a, ne a necessity to, for me. And also, uh, well, thank you for that, first of all. But, uh, you know, so it's, it's not only am I trying to build what I think is the quintessential pose of whatever, this guitar player or this lead singer or whatever, but I'm also trying to, that in the end, that image, that pose doesn't exist anywhere except for on my canvas, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so it, it's, and I've gotten to where I really like the Photoshop process. Now I'm, 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 I'm real elementary in my, in my Photoshop chops. I'm just doing the, the bare minimum of what I need to paint from. I'm not, but by no means am I doing a, like a camera ready or, you know, digital <laughs> right. man, I'm just kind of Frankenstein building components that I. You're getting connect. reference. And, and paint from. Like I say, I have to repair, you know, things when I paint, light sources and, you know, and uh, anyway. So, but I really kind of enjoy the, the, the process of that. And like I say, I try to do them enough ahead of time to where I live with it enough to where I forget what I changed. Right. And that to me says, okay, then, then it works. But if I go back and say, ah, oh, something doesn't look right, then I know it's not ready. Well, you know? you're, you're a true perfectionist and that's how you've gotten well, you know, musically, you, the level that you've gotten to, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you would say just playing the drums over and over and over again to get to that level where yeah. you're able to play with these um, great bands. I mean, that was probably a similar process to what you're doing and have been doing now with art. It's just you keep doing it. You keep doing it. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, and it's... it's uh... You know what they say about the, uh, luck is, you know, preparedness meets uh, opportunity or something like yeah. that. You know, it's, it's, uh, um, but you gotta, I, I try to respect, one thing my parents always instilled in me was, you know, respect your talents that you've been given, meaning, you know, work on them. I mean, uh, get, get better, respect the, the, the talents that you're given. And so I've always tried to do that. Um, and it's it's uh, I I still love both, you know, um, and so painting, you know, like when I started painting my drums, when I, when I, when I was you know I just wanted my drums to look cool, and right. uh, and because I could paint them, to me it was a natural. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, you know. Um, so and then when that started spilling over as other bands would see the bands that I was playing in and comment on my drums. And then I was, I started painting drums for, for all these big bands. Um, it's to me, it's, it was a, a natural progression, a right. natural marriage of my two passions. Um, it's a challenge uh, painting on drums. Well, it's a challenge because you, you know, you, 
you have these talents, you're doing both. So what is your, you know, I know that there's lots of people watching and they would love to be able to see more of your art and also maybe, you know, I'd love to have an art show for you at some point in my gallery. So we'll have to put that on the list. Yes. If we could be so blessed with yeah. you coming. Um, but what, what are you thinking that you'd like to pursue in the future? I mean, I mean, this is really unusual to have someone that is that proficient. And I know I've said it a few times in music and then that proficient in art. Do you see yourself long-term continuing to do both? Or at some point, do you think that you'll shift your focus? And obviously, you, I know you'll always be a musician, but do you see yourself maybe shifting to go into more of showing your art in galleries and, and really pursuing that end of it? Because it's hard to do both. Yeah, it, 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 it is. Um, I hope I never have to choose one or the other. And I've lived this long, not having to. But there are periods where one will eclipse the other, you know, um, where I can't do both. But I've, I've really always been blessed in that it just kind of works out. You know, I mean, I have, uh, I'll, I'll go on the road for a while and then I'll line up commissioned pieces. And, you know, most of the time those those collectors and clients, whether they're, you know, a band that wants me to paint their drums and, you know, have them shipped to my shop and they're waiting for me. And then I know I have, you know, a month break or whatever. And I'll come home and boom, I, I jump on that. Or if it's a canvas, if I can't paint it on the road. So, you know, I, I, I'm always want to, well, I want to, I want to continue with both obviously. So, but <laughs> so, yeah, why can't I, can't I have it all please? <laughs> Well, you're but, so yes, far so good. I mean, you, you're pulling it off, which is great. And well, it sounds like you're pretty organized in it. Um, so back to the music. Here's kind of a fun question I was thinking about. Um, and my boyfriend's a musician. So he, I ha asked him, you know, as a musician, um, if you could play with anyone, is there anyone that, you know, and it could be, could be dead or alive. Uh, is there anyone that I'll give you a second to mull this over that you would have really like, my gosh, if I had an opportunity to play with that group or that person, who would it be? Besides the, besides the obvious that just happened. Yes. Right. Besides that, which is hard to talk. So I mean, now we're going to go on to fantasy Island. And <laughs> <laughs> if you remember that, then yes. uh, we're dating ourselves. I remember uh, I mean, it would be, it would certainly be, it would certainly be Led Zeppelin. It would certainly be uh, Queen. Um, you know, but I, I, I have such a a wide, well, it's not that wide. Some would say I'm very narrow. It's, it's, you know, but I mean, I love, I love obviously a lot of classic rock that I grew up with. Van Halen, Led Zeppelin, Queen, Aerosmith. Uh, even Kiss, even, I mean, the, um, uh, one just escaped me, uh, U2 or the Ramones, or, I mean, there's just, it's, uh, it's a tough choice. I mean, yeah, it would, it would, it would be, my favorites. yeah, I would, I would, I would be stoked to play with any of those, um, any, any of those bands. It's, it's, uh, it's the joy of, the joy of making music. And it's not just about, I joke when I say it's just, fun to hit stuff. I mean, there is, there is that immediate pleasure of that. That's, that's probably the biggest thing that, that music has over painting. Is right. it's, I enjoy the process of, of painting for sure. But it's not like the immediate of like, bang, you hit that symbol with the band and the audience. And you know, I mean, that's nothing is more right. immediate, that instant gratification than that therefore that is just hard to surpass that feeling uh, so the the to me the 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 painting is 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 a is a perfect complement to that immediate high energy performing and then painting is 
more relaxing and you theoretically you can take your time and you're you're um, working toward this end goal of when it's finished i again i enjoy the process but it's like you're you're going for that end result when it's done and then right hopefully somebody likes it as much as you do <laughs> well it's 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 different in that well first of all when you're when you're playing music it's a group event you know you're collaborating yeah. with other musicians yes and then if you're doing a live concert you've got that immediate energy coming from the the crowd when you're painting it's a solo act yeah. It's you, you're, you know, you're collaborating with the canvas and with your paint and you're hoping that they cooperate yeah. then, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then really though, where that elation comes is that when you're finally able to present it to the public or who, if you're doing a commission, it's, it's very different in the approach, but I think that artists, also feed off the energy of the folks that are um, at the the end viewer, if you will, the people that come into the gallery that are they fall in love um, and they have that passion. And I think also, you know, the other thing that I think music and art have in common is that it is the timestamp on this thing that we are making right now, which is called history. And you're making it in two different ways. You're making it in your music and you're making it in, in your art. So you've got kind of a, a double, double threat going on there with <laughs> history. I mean, it, and it's so powerful. I don't know if you recognize it, but you're really putting your time stamp on what people will reflect back. You're, you're bringing art to the world. You're bringing music to the world. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty tall order to be able to do both. And you do it really well. So kudos to you. Well, thank you. I, I you know, I, I'm honored. I'm, 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 I'm blessed to be able to try at both of those things. Again, you know, to be, to, to get to do even one thing that you love, you know, uh, but to get to do two and, and, you know, and they do, go, they've always gone hand in hand, even, you know, even playing in bands when I wouldn't even, I can remember, uh, teachers and stuff in high school and junior high, because I was just gung ho rock and roll man. I just gonna, they knew <laughs> to play bands, you know, wearing concert t shirts. You know, I haven't, I haven't matured at all. And Were drawing, you in a garage band? Draw, oh, yeah. Drawing, drawing <laughs> band logos on my notebooks. And, you know, I mean, it was just like, I'm gonna play, you know, and, uh, you know, some of them would say, well, good thing you have your art to fall back on, which is just like, oh, man. <laughs> No, you know, that's like no musician or, or you know, wannabe musician ever. Yeah, that's like nails that. on the chalkboard there. Yeah, like yeah. It. Oh, no, you know, you know, but, <laughs> um, but they're right. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, not so much to fall back on, but it's, again, it, for me, it, it provides the perfect balance for me between the two. Love it. Uh, or, or, you know, uh, to have both. Uh, that's why I, I, I'm fortunate and I hope that I would never have to do one or the other. Um, I just can't do them both at the exact same time. Yeah, this is unless you get on stage and somehow you're able to work that into, you know. Yeah, I don't think how I paint is, <laughs> is that exciting. Like those guys that are the performance guys. Oh, no, I, I, know. I love it, but what I do is not, this is tedious. No, it's very it's tedious. And you can see that. Yeah, it's it's. It's fairly fun to, for me to watch. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. When it's all said and done and we're not here, I always love to ask this question because I think it's a really interesting thing to reflect on, especially in light of this corona thing. What would you like people to reflect on? You know, we're, you know, 100 years from now, I don't know, we might still be here. There's new technology. But <laughs> what, what, do you, what would you like people to think about when they look at your art? Let's talk about your art specifically. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I hope it, I hope it stands the test of time. I mean, it's like with, uh, I think certainly for me, musicians and artists, I think we, we look back on, I look back on paintings like I did three, four years ago, or certainly further, you know, where I would kind of, I see things like, Ooh, I would, I would do that differently. You know, I, I think we always have to be 
progressing. Sure. Uh, ideally, you know. Um, so, and, and same with music. I think, you know, I think bands, you know, listen to their, their first albums or I can listen to things that I recorded, you know, uh, and, you know, you just kind of get, hopefully it's not too much cringe, but you always, you know, feel like you can do the next one better. That's why, that's why I would say, oh, the, my favorite painting is the one I, I start tomorrow or I finish, you know, but um, so I think, I hope somebody can appreciate what went into it. Um, certainly because of my subject matter, you know, it's, it's, it's iconic. Kind of, it's kind of um, documents an era of, of rock and roll, of live, live music. And I think the, the whole black and white thing for me, uh, I've always been fascinated with black and white. It probably goes back to drawing pencil on paper, mm -hmm. black and white. I still, if I'm scanning TV channels and I come across a black and white movie, I'll stop and watch it every time. Uh, but there's something about the black and white photography and for me, uh, portraits, that's just, it seems more like a historical document uh, or depiction of of that event. There's, I don't, I, I don't know if that makes any sense to me, to you, but. No, it does. And me. on an artistic note, one of the things that we've always said about black and white is that artists that are able to create in black and white really are technically superior because it has to be flawless. Our, the way that our mind picks up a black and white image is very different than color. Color is very forgiving. So if you like, red and you see a big splash of red, an artist can probably get away with not being as, as uh, technically proficient. Whereas when it's just black and white, boy, every little subtle nuance shows. And if you didn't nail it, it's very apparent. So we I've... always say that black and white or drawing is the bones of all great art. So if you can do that, you can do anything. Well, I like the sound of that. <laughs> I don't know that I can do anything, but I just, I, I, I even when I'm home, I, I mean, I could always say that, you know, when I tour, it's out of necessity, but I just carry bare bone, you know, black and white, you know, but it's not. I, even when I'm home, that's just what I, I love to do. Something about, uh, again, the, the, it takes away, for me, it kind of takes away some of the distractions of color, uh, even though, you know, I do love color. Um, there's just something about boiling it down to it, its essence of, of, of shape and light and shade and right. you know, everything in between. Uh, I don't know. It's I love black and white. I'm enamored by it. Classic. Yeah. It's absolutely classic. Yeah. 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 Well, I so appreciate taking your time today. And um, I really would, your website is, is it? JohnDouglas.com. Yeah. yeah, so folks, if you, want to, if you want to check out some pretty awesome artwork, go there and uh, stay tuned for more of this amazing artist, musician to come to the world and bring us more beauty and joy. Um, it's just always a delight to have somebody like you in my presence because I know how much you're giving to the world and I think probably more than you even know. So um Hopefully, we'll be able to have a show here for you soon. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Thanks Thank so, you so much, much John. Ben. What a blessing. Have a great day. Appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Bye -bye. Okay, folks, so Art of the City TV here. We're going to have a lot more great artists like John here live streaming, so stay tuned. We'll be making posts, but... I think one of the things that I really love about being an art dealer is being able to bring these great talents to folks like you. There are so many great artists out there. Not all of them are at this level, though, that are able to be multi-talented with being great at music, great at art. Usually somebody, you know, really chooses one discipline. But in John's case, I mean, who knows what he's going to do next? I mean, this guy just is uh, blowing everybody away. So we will see you on the next.
live streaming, Art of the City TV. Be well, be safe. Make sure you bring a little art into your life and, you know, share it with those around you. We all really need it right now. So till next time, I'll see you again.